This is the 2017 BMW 530i. It's the seventh generation of 5 Series, the German luxury automaker's core product line. At first glance, though, you'd be forgiven for thinking it was its big brother, the 7 Series. The size and price set the two apart, even if the family resemblance can't be mistaken. Inside, though, BMW has cherry-picked some of the best 7 Series parts for the 5 Series cabin. There's a little more plastic to the switch gear, but it's a beautifully constructed, pleasant place to be. The big difference, though, is what's under the hood. Now, once upon a time, a four-cylinder engine and a luxury car was about as welcome as gonads in soup. And while some people sure would try a bowl, most people would just opt for the Minestrone. Times change, however, and so do economy requirements. And so BMW has done this. They've given the 530i a two-liter, four-cylinder turbocharged engine. The previous car had one too. Powers up slightly, torque is down slightly. But the most important thing is when paired with this very good eight-speed automatic transmission, torque lag is practically non-existent. It'll do naught to 60 miles an hour in about six seconds, so BMW claims. You'll cut a little bit off that if you go for the X-Drive all-wheel drive version. Top speed's 130 miles an hour. So this isn't the fastest BMW you can get, but it's very smooth. And although at cruising speed, you'll definitely miss the six. I know I did. You're not gonna miss it necessarily when you're around the town. What the 5 Series does steal from the 7 Series and in spades is its technology. The dashboard is a smorgasbord of tech. It's a cliche to say that a car has more tech going on than a space shuttle mission, but this is more than what's going on in NASA full stop. There are three drive modes, Sport, Comfort and Eco, and you can customise them with individual settings for the suspension, powertrain and more. The instrumentation looks analogue, but it's actually a bright, high-resolution display that changes with each drive mode. When it comes to control, you're spoiled for choice. As with earlier iDrive systems, there's a navigation wheel topped with a touchpad on which you can scribe addresses and phone numbers. However, the new 5 Series adds a touchscreen too. Twirl your finger at the dash, and the gesture sensor from the 7 Series adjusts the volume. Stab two fingers at it, like you're warding off the evil eye, and you can skip tracks or set the navigation to your home address. You can pinch and manipulate a virtual car when you're parking, like you're in the Matrix and it's bullet time. Obviously, there's a full suite of safety tech too, including pedestrian warnings, lane departure avoidance, and the car even steering you out of the way of danger if you weave across lanes. Meanwhile, massage seats are performing dark arts on your derriere, while a Qi wireless charging pad is topping up your phone. And that's only scratching the surface. I suspect BMW knows just how intimidating all this could be. There's a full instruction manual built into the infotainment system with a search feature. So if you're ever wondering, well, what does that button do? You can just go hunting and hopefully get an answer. I wouldn't recommend doing it while driving though. Out on the road, you're not gonna get as much grip as in the X-Drive version, but the rear wheel drive platform is a sweet one. And you can see why BMW fans insist on having the back wheels of their car driven, not the front. Now, if there's a downside, it's what happens to your wallet. The 5 Series was never going to be a cheap car, but if you start ticking some of the options boxes, things get crazy very quickly. There is, don't get me wrong, a huge amount to like about this car. The 530i may not have the V6 that traditional luxury car owners might think they need, but the four-cylinder turbocharged engine is great. It's giving me around 25 miles per gallon without any kind of cosseting. And it's a reasonably fast car too. It picks up easily, it cruises nicely. On the freeway, you get a little bit of harshness at the top end, but we're in line six. give you that burble. But still, this is a really good car and a four-cylinder engine doesn't have to be a compromise. All the same, if you want all of the tech, and I think you kind of do, it gets expensive very quickly. Still, if you're not going to carry many people in the back, which is where the 7 Series excels, the 530i and the other members of the 5 Series family are a really good place to start, especially if, like me, you do love a bit of gadgetry.